Hey everybody, I hope to prove to you in this video that God is not nor has ever been racist and does not favor one subgroup of humans over another. Last week we were looking into the history of Israel and found out that most of the provable history coincided with the history of what the Jewish Bible itself calls the beast. And in previous videos before that we found out that the modern country of Israel is what Isaiah called the daughter of Zion overrun by strangers. So the Bible says the governmental power that's attempting to control the Middle East now is not the same group that was there originally. So we've already taken a brief look at the history of Israel going back to the first stone carving in 1209 BC. And if you haven't seen the explanation of this chart, there's a link below to that video. But we'll find out later in this video that the first Semites, um, according to scientists, appeared in the area around 3800 BC just before the start of the Bronze Age. And in this video, we're going to look at the history of the Israeli region prior to that during the Stone Age. But before we start, let's just understand who the Semites are, because a lot of people think it's the Jews or the people of Israel, and it's not. The term Semitic was first used to refer to a language family called the Semitic languages, which include both Hebrew and Arabic, among others. And the Semitic family is a member of the Afro-Asiatic family and have their origin in North Africa and Northeast Africa. And it says here, Today the word Semite may be used to refer to any member of any number of peoples of ancient southwestern Asian descent. And southwestern Asia is the green area here, basically the Middle East. So the term Semite refers to anyone of ancient Middle Eastern descent. It's not limited to the Israeli region and it's not limited to those who claim to be Jews. So Anyone who is anti-Palestinian, for example, would be by definition an anti-Semite. And the Semitic family has its origin in Africa. And this is where it gets really interesting because we know the Bible says the Israelites came out of Egypt and Egypt is in northeastern Africa. So it tells us the Israelites came out of northeastern Africa and they crossed over the Red Sea right here and entered into the ancient land of Canaan, which is modern day Israel. That's what the Bible says. And that's not debated among Bible scholars. But what is debated is when that event actually occurred. So we're going to go back and look into the prehistory of the Israeli region. So let's just transfer over the Bronze Age right here and the Cedar Olam Rabbah's date for Adam and Eve onto this chart so we know where we're at. The Cedar Olam Rabbah puts the date for the creation of Adam and Eve at 3924 BC and we know the Bronze Age started around 3300 BC and before that was the Stone Age right here. Human prehistory split up into three stages, the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. And we, like I said, we looked at the history of Israel in both the Bronze Age right here and the Iron Age in last week's video. And this week we're going to go back even further and look at the land of Israel's history throughout the Stone Age. So we're going to look at the standard scientific viewpoint of history here in attempt to possibly reconcile the Judeo-Christian perspective with the archaeological evidence if we can. Because... I've noticed some things that I haven't heard anyone else mention, and I know there's debate going on between supposed creationist theory versus evolution, but personally, I don't think one negates the other, and I'll show you why. So according to archaeological and genetic evidence, all anatomically modern humans originated in Africa, and that's called the out of Africa theory, and it's the most widely accepted theory among scientists. It says right here, um, one branch of Homo sapiens left Africa between 125,000 and 60,000 years ago, and a growing number of researchers also suspect that North Africa was the home of the modern humans who first trekked out of the continent. And they left by traveling over the land bridge that opened up between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, which is just like the Bible story tells us. The sea parted and they traveled across on dry land. Then under her early human migrations here in Wikipedia, it says modern humans reached the Near East around 125,000 years ago. 
So we'll just put that on our chart approximately 125,000 years ago. Homo sapiens came out of Africa, they think. And then it says there's some evidence for the argument that modern humans left Africa at least 125,000 years ago using two different routes, the Nile Valley right up here heading into modern Israel and the second one through the strait down here. Um, and according to the recent African origin theory, a small group living in East Africa migrated northeast, possibly searching for food and crossing the Red Sea about 70 millennia ago. So that's 70,000 years ago. So we'll put that on our chart as well. Approximately 70,000 years ago, a small group crossed the Red Sea. And they're saying that small group that crossed the Red Sea at that time can be identified by its DNA as the L3 haplogroup. Well, the L3 haplogroup is a human mitochondrial DNA category. It says here, soon after the haplogroup arose in East Africa, a relatively small number of migrants carried it across the Red Sea to Arabia, inaugurating an intercontinental migration that eventually settled ever, every major landmass on Earth except Antarctica. And that small group also gave rise to every non-African haplogroup. So the L3 is subdivided into several clades, two of which spawn the haplogroups M and N, from which the majority of non-Africans are descended. Um, and then it lists some of the L3 subgroups here, like L3C, which encompasses the Ethiopian Jews, and L3E, which is the most common among African Americans, for example. And this is haplogroup M which is a descendant of L3 and, ha and group N, which is also a descendant of L3. And group N is the ancestral haplogroup to almost all European, Asian, and Native American haplogroups. So this is a map of the mitochondrial DNA groups right here and their migrations throughout history, which shows that all of humanity descended from the L3, which came out of Africa. So it's scientifically accepted that all of humanity is essentially African. And we'll get into the details of that in a minute later on in this video. But for now, let's just look at the region where Israel is now, where the exodus out of Africa occurred. So in archaeology, this region is called the Southern Levant, which includes modern day Israel, the Palestinian territories, Jordan, and the southern part of Lebanon. And it says that during the Neogene period, it was one of the major dispersal routes for hominins moving out of Africa into the rest of the world. So the Neogene period was between 23 million and 2.5 million years ago. So we'll just put that on our chart right here. 23 million to 2.5 million years ago, the Red Sea land bridge opened and it was a major dispersal route through Israel by hominins right here so the neogene period is also known as the miocene and the pliocene periods and it says this was the time period when the sea levels fell exposing the land bridges between africa and eurasia so for example this land bridge right here between the red sea and the mediterranean they say that land bridge opened up sometime between 23 million and 2.5 million years ago so the red sea land bridge opened up somewhere right in here and they're saying the hominins crossed over that bridge at that time and just so you know the hominins are are from the tribe of hominini and i thought this was really interesting because the hominini tribe includes both pan and homo homo obviously being um where the homo sapiens where we descended from apparently um the Homo is the subtribe Hominina and Pan is the subtribe Panina. And Panina is the chimpanzee. So chimps are the species of apes in the genus Pan. And they're also the only known members of the subtribe Panina. And I, I actually laughed when I saw this because um, this might actually be the true basis of the legend of Pan who was the Greek god of the wild that later came to be thought of as the devil. It's actually the chimp. Um, the chimpanzee is Pan, the god of the wild. The members of the subtribe Panina, which is the other branch of the Hominini. And this is the chart right here. Modern humans or Homo sapiens are out of the Homo subtribe and chimps are out of the Pan subtribe. So Pan the wild and homo the civilized i was just i was shocked to see that because over such a long period of time these legends of pan the wild one developed and metamorphosized into the devil apparently um but 
going back to what we were saying, it says the Southern Levant was one of the major dispersal routes for hominins during the Neogene period. So this area here, the Israeli region, 23 million to 2.5 million years ago, was a major dispersal route for hominins. Um, as we as we put on our chart already and the archaeological evidence in that region shows the earliest documented traces of human occupation about 1.4 million years ago in this region right here it says this was the earliest migration of the homo erectus out of africa and it says here 1.5 million years ago so we'll put that on our chart right here approximately 1.5 million years ago homo erectus came out of africa and this is a cave where some of the fossils were found, including the Neanderthal Galilee skull. And then it says that later also contains the world's first signs of domesticated dogs and controlled usage of fire. And then from 250,000 to 48,000 BC is represented by the Mousterian culture. So we'll put that on our chart right here, which is basically the Neanderthals, which use flint tools right here. And the scientists think the Neanderthals lived alongside the anatomically modern humans at that time. But this is sort of strange because it says the scientists think the anatomically modern humans were actually dominated or accultured, quote unquote, by the Neanderthals at that time because the flint tool culture by Neanderthals existed in Europe about 100,000 years before it reached the Levant. And modern humans originated in Africa and they were coming out through that Levant region. So this is a map of the area right here. You can see the Neanderthal fossils are represented by a star and the modern humans in relation with Mousterian lithic, lithic are represented by an asterisk right here. So you can see where they were. And I guess that archeological evidence indicates that Neanderthals were using flint tools in Europe 100,000 years before modern humans started using them in the Levant region right here. And they think the modern humans were accultured or taught the Neanderthal ways, which kind of seem backward to me. I mean, we know that both the Neanderthals and the modern humans came out of Africa, but it just seems like the modern humans would be more sophisticated than the Neanderthals. But apparently um, that didn't mean anything because, you know, and I guess it's it's still kind of like that in our world today because brutality seems to thrive in our world as well. So it made me think of the ancient story of Cain and Abel. And I wonder if that had something to do with, with what they're describing right here during that time period, the domination of the um, the modern humans by the Neanderthals at that time. Um, but anyway, in the Levant region from 18,000 BC to 12,500 BC, it says the bow and arrow appeared. And then from 12,500 BC until 9,500 BC, the development of sedentism, which is basically just means they began settling down and staying permanently in one place at that time instead of being nomadic. And then during the Neolithic period, agriculture and farming began. Um, which is from 10,200 BC until around 2000 BC. So we'll just put that on our chart as well. Approximately 10,000 BC to 2000 agriculture and farming developed in that region. Again, it's talking about the development of the Southern Levant, the region of Israel. And it says the first appearance of Semites in this area was probably during the Gosolian period um, from 3800 to 3350 BC. So we'll put that on our chart as well right here. And that's what they say um, created the basis of the Mediterranean economy that has characterized the area ever since. That was during the Gosselian period right there. Um, so I'm going to have to stop part one right here. The link to part two is below.